Hey, it's Don, and today we're going to talk about another item that I look for pretty much every single place I go. It's Uncle Sam related items. Many people aren't familiar with Uncle Sam's actual history. They think he's from either World War I or World War II, but he goes all the way back to the War of 1812 and a businessman that actually supplied beef to the U.S. government. So he does have a good history with us. There's a large chunk of items that actually have his image on them as well, and we're going to talk about those right now. So here we are with collectibles of Uncle Sam. Now, these are in, in no specific order, price-wise, or anything else like that. I just pulled some of the vast variety of items that you will see for Uncle Sam, just to give you an idea on the item specifics and the actual values on these. I found most of the items you're going to see. You can see my videos. I sell pretty much all of this type of item already. So I do find Uncle Sam items fairly often. The most common are tokens, which is what's right here and um, poster-wise and postcards. Those are the most common items that I run across in Uncle Sam. If you're lucky, you can run into some sheet music or something along that line as well, too. But here's a token. This is a Civil War token. This is a typical from the era. This is what you see. Yankee Robinson, I believe this is like a, yeah, it's a show or a circus. There's trade cards from the same person as well, too. This one sold for $162. Next item here is probably the most famous one. It's the James Montgomery flag poster, I Want You for the U.S. Army. This is a classic. This one always sells for a horrendous amount of money. There's postcard versions of this as well that can sell. Nowhere near this, obviously, but this is $2,700. An old fortune teller machine, $1,600. Now, of course, you're not going to run into most of these items. There's reproductions of some of these as well, too, especially the poster we just showed you, so be careful out there. One rule of thumb, if Uncle Sam is in the item, on the item, on the cover, or that's what it is, he should be one of the first things you list in the title. It's a big keyword search for a lot of people. There are collectors that only collect Uncle Sam items. Um, another example here, $1,000 for this one here, as you saw the comic book as well, too. We'll show you a few other comic books here. The postcards, though, are ones that I do run into the most, as I said. Now, there's hold to the light versions of this. Basically, if you don't know what a hold to the light, HTL, it means if you hold it to the light, like the stars on his jacket will light up because the paper is actually thin there, so it actually shines light from behind through the card. Hold to the light. This one went for $849. Now, there's some of these Uncle Sam cards that go for $1,400. That's about the max I've seen some of these postcards go for. Another comic book, just another perfect example, 560. This is Uncle Sam Quarterly. There was a bunch of issues of this, so it was actually a collected series. It came out during World War II, um, and it went out throughout the war, basically. It was a patriotic thing. Uh, next one here is another poster. There's several different versions of Uncle Sam posters. This is a War Bonds poster. I do run into War Bond posters occasionally at auction. you got to be careful, though, again, because there are reproductions. Next one here is a piece of artwork. It's by a known artist. I'm not going to go into the detail on the actual artist. You will have to look this up to see the actual details, but it's just a perfect example of other items of Uncle Sam that do go. Here's just another comic book. This is a Captain Marvel, so it would still have some value either way. The Uncle Sam on the cover actually helps the value in most comic books. They're usually war era as well, too. Just another poster. Now, this is a metal um, gas station sign is what they have it, but it's just basically a, a normal sign for recruitment. Um, Double-sided, they would have been on like a standing up uh, sign that you would actually have in front of a building. Uh, $408 on that one. Now, trade cards, obviously, everybody knows I do do trade cards. This one went for $375. Um, not, a, not odd, not um, out of the ordinary for these kind of cards. Some of these even go for higher than that. I've seen the same card for over $500. So $375 isn't that outrageous. Next one here is a Civil War patriotic cover. It has a cachet. That's what this basically is. This is Civil War era. I've had several. You've seen them in some of my videos if you watched enough of them. This is a typical example of what you would find. This is a rare design, though. I have not seen this specific one in person other than in a book or something like that. You can see it's got a lot of damage, creasing tears. It may only be... Oh, it's actually the whole cover. Sometimes you'll just see the face of a cover, and even those can sell. This one went for $375. 
Now here is a Columbian Exposition item. It's from the World's Fair from 1892-1893. These do show up. I have seen this one in person. $350. Now this is a match safe. $350 on this. Next item here is a poster, another one. This is a Share Root Smokers. It's a Victorian era advertising piece is basically what it is. It's in a junky frame. I wouldn't worry about the frame. Whoever buys it's going to reframe it. 350 is what this one went for. I would have put it up for more, actually, probably in the 750 range. But, you know, that's that's what it is. Now, here's just a folk art piece. This could be vintage. It could be new. It's hard to say on some of these. I never trust the age on, on any uh, pieces like this because there's too many people that recreate these and they want them to look vintage so that they are, are more expensive. This one does look like it is a vintage piece, but then again, you know, I, I'm always cautious on these. So $300, just over $300 on this piece. Next one here is a Mickey Mouse, and I, I talk about Disney items all the time. Anything that you do in a normal life, Disney has tried to do in market. This is just a typical example. This one sold for $300. Next one here is a celluloid piece. It's a figure. It's just meant to stand there. Patriotic, probably in my guess, World War I era through World War II. Now, there also are chalkware versions of this, which are basically made of, of plaster of some sort. So, gypsum or something like that. Basically, $300 on this one. I talk about calendars as well. Another perfect example. This is a rare old one. And it's also done by Dean Cornwall. So this has many different uh, cross-category interests in this item. It could have been listed in probably four or five different categories. Uh, you've got character for Uncle Sam. You've got railroad. You've got the artist. And you've got a calendar as well, too. So that's at least four for this one. Another comic book. I've had many issues of Target comics before. If I'm not mistaken, they've done a couple series of Target as well. Um, that's the character Target on the top left. Uncle Sam, again, is on the cover. That's why this is, is um, so pricey. Um, again, there's many other characters on here, which most people don't have a clue on. There was a ton of different comic book characters. Uncle Sam, though, as I said, is a popular one. Now, here's a Toby jug um, pitcher. Uh, you can see the spout. So this is versus a, a mug. It's a pitcher with the spout. So you can see very easily that's what this is by the shape. Uncle Sam, $270. No markings, which, you know, you will find many of these without markings. Obviously, a marking, they go much better. Next one here is a pin back button. One surefire way to see if they're vintage is if that pin, you see the bottom pin right there that sticks out. If it sticks out past the actual button itself, it's pre, say, 1920-ish um, or before. There was a safety regulation that made um, that banned. You couldn't have a pin that sticked out past the button like that. Too many people were getting stabbed and infection-wise could have set in. So you can always tell how old they are. And if the pin's even longer, it's usually earlier. Not always, but usually. So this is a legit piece. I've had this one before. They do show up. It's not a super rare item. You'll have to go to an auction or an antique mall or something along that line to find these type of items. Estate sales are really good on these. Estate sales are really good on these. I find a lot of little pins and buttons just like this at estate sales. If you don't go to estate sales, you're just missing out on so many opportunities of vintage items like this. Next one here is a real photo postcard. They're celebrating peace, the the end of the World War One here on this one. And Uncle Sam, someone's dressed like Uncle Sam. That all helps in here, the characters, the masks. That's literally why these things sell for so high in many cases. $205, 18 bids on this one. I might have just put this up for $350 as a bin with best offer and then went from there. I might have gotten more than that out of it, honestly. Uh, auctions just aren't the way to go on some items these days. Next one here is a Pez dispenser. This is from 1976. I've seen this one before. I have not had this one sealed, but they do show up. You can see there's no feet on it. The best way to tell if it's a vintage Pez is to look at the base of it. If it has no feet to help it stand up, it is an early one. It is worth at least looking into. Sealed ones always go for much more, $203. And I've just got one vintage item left, and that is a bottle opener here. Now, this one's in... in fairly rough condition. A lot of the paint's gone. You can see the rust from it sitting around. 
I don't always judge the rust to say that it's a vintage one, though. Just to let you know, people leave the newer ones outside trying to fool somebody, and they'll usually look like this. I've looked at this one fairly closely because it does look to be legit. I've seen a few of these in my day, so I, I do have some experience on this one. The markings, everything seems to be legit in my personal opinion. Cast name, manufacturer, the screw mounts, the whole, the overall size on this one. Again, there's reproductions on everything like this um, across the board and all kinds of items. But you just got to be careful on buying items like this. Make sure you, you know for sure they're legit. If not, if you're not sure yourself, make sure there's a return policy on these. So if something turns out to be fake from like an auction or something, you've got some recourse. Usually on a state sale, though, if you buy it, it's yours. No returns. Some of the auctions, if they quote the item and it's advertised as legit and it's not, they will take it back. So, you know, you've got to build a rapport with some of these auction houses to, to at least be able to, you know, get some of these issues taken care of for you. Well, there you go. There's some more items that I look for. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.